the easiest way to come up with content. And I know how hard it is to overthink this, but truly the easiest way to come up with content that I think so many online entrepreneurs, coaches, and just content creators in general completely overlook is Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my podcast. If you are listening to this on iTunes or Spotify, you can come on over to my YouTube channel if you wanna see the video and see many of my crazy visual expressions. Sometimes we splice in a little B-roll to keep it interesting, but I'm really excited about today's topic because the topic of this podcast and the way it came about is in of itself a perfect example of what I'm gonna be talking about today, which is the easiest way to come up with content. And I know how hard it is to overthink this. Trust me, I initially, especially back in the day when I was like blogging and trying to grow my Twitter profile, wow, right? I'm so old that Twitter was actually named Twitter <laughs> back in the day. But those are my preferred platforms like way, way, like 2011, 2012, so way, way back in the day. And I would be really stressed out trying to think about, oh, what keywords should I include in my blog or what topics are trending on Twitter that I should you know, come alongside. And I'm really grateful that after, I'd say, about a year or two of kind of like floundering around, I finally just said, you know what, I'm going to talk about the things that I want to talk about. And I've actually talked about that, right? Coming up with content as it relates to your own personal interest and in previous videos. But truly the easiest way to come up with content that I think so many online entrepreneurs, coaches, and just content creators in general completely overlook is content that comes out of your real life. And so I was not even gonna do a podcast on this topic, or at least I wasn't gonna shoot this one today. But before I came here to my little recording studio, I stopped and got lunch. I actually did one of my CEO lunches. So maybe you've heard me talked about that, where I take myself out to an extravagant lunch and I just sit down with myself and really think through things. You know, I, I don't schedule any meetings. I just have a good time by myself really trying to be the CEO, right? So I was doing that, I had my laptop, there with me and I was actually outlining content, right? I was thinking about content and I had a Kindle with me and the waitress, she comes over and she sees the Kindle and she's like, oh my goodness, that's so cool. I love Kindles. I read on Kindles too. And I felt really good because Kindles to me, and maybe like I'm way off base here, I just feel kind of old reading on a Kindle, right? I feel like the cool kids, the Gen Z's, you know, they're like on their phone or maybe, you know, they're just getting their information from TikTok, whatever. So, you know, for me to be there like with a Kindle, you know, fiddling with the buttons and trying to get the highlight to go. I was like, oh, wow. I'm like <laughs> really showing my age here. And she was younger. She seemed like more of Gen Z age. So the fact that she really liked my Kindle, I was like, oh, maybe Kindles are still cool devices. And so she was like, oh, if you don't mind me asking, what are you reading? And of course, I was so excited to tell her because if you know me at all, you know, I'm obsessed with books, right? I have plenty of videos on this channel about uh, my favorite books, books that I'm reading. But the book that I was reading at the time and that I'm currently reading right now is called Excellence Wins. I've talked about this book elsewhere on this YouTube channel, and it's written by the co-founder of the Ritz Carlton. And I've been reading this book for a minute. Um, actually, I've been reading this book since I came back from my Croatia trip, which I also talked about on this channel, if you wanna see the behind the scenes of that. But I recently went to Los Angeles and I talk about that in my Los Angeles vlog slash you know, video, which you can also check out. And I stayed at a Ritz Carlton specifically because I wanted to see if this man, you know, all the business principles that he was talking about, success principles, leadership, right? Again, I'm growing my company. I'm like consuming so much content and so many books on leadership right now. I was like, let me see if he's putting these things into place, right? I'm going to stay at a Ritz Carlton as a customer and I'm going to see if I'm going to get the Ritz Carlton effect that he talks about in his book. And yes, my stay was great. I have no complaints. But anyway, that was the book that I was reading just a few hours ago during my CEO lunch. And so, you know, I, I tell the young woman, I tell her kind of the backstory behind it. I'm like, oh yeah, um, you know, I went to LA, I stayed at the Ritz Carlton and I'm reading this book by the co-founder of the Ritz Carlton. And I just really wanted to experience it for myself because I want to see those principles in action to see how I can apply them to my own business. And she was like, oh, that's amazing. What kind of business do you have? And I, you know, felt so proud. I was able to say, ha <laughs> 
funny you ask, right? No, um, but I was really excited. I was actually able to share my new elevator pitch where I was like, oh, I actually run an online coaching certification company that provides accredited certifications to aspiring coaches. And we have a team of coaches that coach in the program with me who are well-versed in the art of coaching, who have PhDs and we're really passionate about helping coaches, particularly women, create financial success through coaching businesses. So that's what I told her. And of course she was like, what? Oh my goodness. So anyway, we had this really great conversation and it dawned on me. I was like, oh, okay. There's, there's layers to this, right? So I've come on this channel and I've talked a lot about how content isn't that hard. Talk about things that you're interested in. People will connect them with you. But I realized in that moment that I not only talk about things that I'm interested in, but I connect two seemingly separate things and whatever is birthed from that connection, like the crazy insights that I get from that connection, I will often turn that into content. And I realized that because I was telling the waitress, hey, okay, so I'm reading this book. This book is by this guy who starts a hotel company. I don't have a hotel company, but I went to stay at this man's hotel because I'm reading this book because I wanted to see what principles are in this book that I could apply to my company, which is a different type of company than his company, right? A lot of people don't do that. Like <laughs> I'm learning. There's a lot of things that I do that I think are obvious that people don't do. In fact, even when it comes to content creation in a particular industry, I know this is definitely the case for online business, coaching, but whatever it is you do, maybe you're a health and fitness person, a fashion person, whatever. Oftentimes we consume so much content just on that specific topic. And then we wonder why our well feels dry or why we feel like it's all been said before or there's nothing new to say. We don't get in the habit of taking things that are outside of our industry or that are not even connected. And I read on a variety of topics. I mean, I, I literally was reading on like ancient monarchies <laughs> like a few months ago, right? Like I, I read on crazy stuff that has nothing to do with anything, but I love it because oftentimes I will find, I call them like golden nuggets. I'll find something really interesting in that and I will connect it either to something that is relevant for me or more importantly, something that is relevant for my audience and voila, content explosion. It is literally the easiest way to create content. So in short, you gotta apply two different things, right? One of these things is not like the other. Find those things and then marry them together and you'll often have innovative takes on your content. But I know you're probably wondering like, okay, practically, how do I do this? Do I need to do CEO lunches? One, I would say yes, I highly recommend them. But the first thing that you need to keep in mind is you wanna have a diversity of inputs because diversity of inputs creates diversity of outputs. And one of the easiest way to have a diversity of inputs is simply to speak with diverse people, right? And by diversity, I'm not just talking about people who might be, you know, physically or ethnically different from you, even though you should definitely do that. Speak to people from different cultures, you'll learn so much, but just speak to people who are in different stations of life, speak to people who are different ages, right? Again, I was speaking with a young woman, she was Gen Z, she was a waitress, you know, I'm a business owner having my CEO lunch, even though I remember when I used to wait tables and pick the brains of all the interesting business people that would come into the restaurant that I worked with. So it kind of felt like a, a full circle moment, but I talked to all kinds of people because I genuinely think people are interesting. And oftentimes this happens. <laughs> exactly. Right. I end up having really interesting conversations that spark something that I would not have thought of before. And I even have a little saying that I always tell myself, which is don't let everyone teach you, but you can learn from everyone. And so what I mean by that is I am very strict in terms of specific teachers that I will seek out, right? Or mentors or coaches. And I've talked about this as well. I don't really like anyone teaching me if they have not gone through the path that I'm looking to go through and they've done it in the way that I want to go through it or they've achieved the type of success that I want, right? I've talked elsewhere on this channel in terms of even entrepreneurial advice. I'm really reluctant to take advice from entrepreneurs just because they're successful if their lifestyle doesn't line up with mine. I mean, I open all of my YouTube videos saying, you know, I'm a busy wife and mom that wears all the hats and does all the things. I don't want to take advice from, you know, a single entrepreneur with no kids and no family responsibilities who works 14 hours a day and it's telling me what I need to do in order to be successful in my business, right? So it's not just that that person has achieved what I've wanted to achieve, but that they've walked down the path that I want to walk. So in that regard, I don't let everybody teach me, but here's the thing, you can learn from everyone, right? So even if there's someone where maybe you're like, ooh, they're terrible with relationships, right? And I would, you know, never let them teach me on how to have a good marriage, that doesn't mean you can't learn from them. Sometimes you can learn what not to do. So I try to keep myself very open to always learn 
learning, again, from interesting people that I'm coming across, even if they themselves haven't necessarily achieved something that I want to achieve, or even if they have viewpoints that I disagree with, or, you know, they live a certain way where I'm like, whoa, <laughs> couldn't be me. You know, I still like to learn from people because oftentimes they will reveal very interesting insight if you get into conversations with them. So one of the best ways to have diversity of output is to have diversity of input and you want to speak with a diverse group of people. But in addition to speaking with diverse people, I also speak with people that are just like me, primarily a lot of women entrepreneurs. Many of my friends are women entrepreneurs and we are always sending each other like these crazy long voice notes on our phone, right? Because it's a lot easier than like having a dedicated phone call. I know my mom thinks it's so weird. She's like, why don't you just call your friends? And I'm like, no, we text only and we send voice notes, right? I feel like you could tell people's age. Right? I feel like the Gen Z's, they love, you know, FaceTiming. I'm like, don't FaceTime me. I don't, I don't have time for that. I'm, I'm focused on this. I'm on the go, right? But I'll send you a text or I'll send you a voice note. So literally I'll send like 10 minute voice notes going back and forth with my friends. And again, we're often in the same station of life. We're moms of small kids. We're married, we're running businesses. And so again, even though I like to have conversations with people who are different from me, right? Diverse perspectives. I also like to have conversations with people who are similar to me because oftentimes they will have a unique insight that I hadn't thought of because we're going through the same things together. And and oftentimes I find myself coaching myself by coaching my friends, right? So again, they're asking me questions or we're kind of like tackling something or I'm helping them through a problem and we're sending these voice notes back and forth. And I'm realizing as I'm sending them the voice note that I'm like answering the questions that I have for myself, for my own problems. It's so bizarre. But again, many of those voice notes have been so good and so rich that I have taken them and repurposed them as content. So no, I don't literally, you know, strip the audio. These are like private conversations that I have with my friends, but the content of them, like the substance of what we were talking about. Again, so many ahas come out from that that I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to talk about this on a podcast. I have to talk about this in the video. This would make such great content. So again, diversity of inputs creates diversity of outputs and you want to make sure that you are talking to people, talk to people who are like you, talk to people who are not like you because you never know what will come up. Now, another way to have diversity of inputs so that you can have diversity of outputs is you wanna try what I call old new things, right? So we obviously know that trying new things is very important to give us new experiences. For instance, I talked a lot and I still talk a lot about my experience in South Africa. I had like three podcasts that I did when I got back because I learned so much. I met so many different people, right? The sights, the sounds, the food, it was just amazing. So obviously it's gonna be really easy to create a lot of content doing something really unique like going to South Africa or going to Croatia or whatever. But oftentimes I will do old things or like, you know, the same kind of mundane things, going to the grocery store or whatever, but I'll do them in a new way in order to create a unique experience that I can then use as the basis for content. It might be something as simple as going to a grocery store that I haven't gone before, like a different type of brand. Maybe if I always go to this style of grocery store, maybe I go to um, like a gourmet grocery store. Maybe I go to a grocery store that specializes in a specific type of cuisine. I know that when I was in college, when I went to Washington, D.C., I used to love to go to, you know, different international markets where different cultures would, you know, have their specific groceries, right? So different types of Asian foods or different type of Caribbean foods. Like I would love to go to these little markets. And sometimes I'm like getting the same things, right? Like pretty much every grocery store sells lettuce. Every grocery store is going to sell rice. But oftentimes I would find like fruits that I had never heard of before. Or I would just talk to the people at the checkout and I would hear their really interesting stories, you know, what their backgrounds are, what they're into what they're watching right now like is there some tv show that's really hot in this particular community that i've never heard of and i want to go check out so again it's not always going someplace new um, meaning like traveling outside of the country or even traveling outside of your state but think of things that you do in your day-to-day -day routine and see if you can do them in a new way it might be something as simple as taking a new way home, right? I know that sounds ridiculous, like really, but think about it. Most of us drive the same way to and from work or to and from school or to and from home. Try going a different way. Try cutting through a different neighborhood. Again, try seeing something new, do something old, new, and you will be amazed at random insights that come just from you. One, I feel like your brain processes differently when you're seeing different, you know, stimuli out in the environment. You're not seeing the same stuff all the time because we kind of get an autopilot and tune out. But again, you might come across stuff, right? Maybe you come across a store that you're like, what is that store? And then you get home and you Google it later and you realize that, you know, it's this uh, brand new bookstore opened by this husband and wife couple. I'm like completely making this up. Sort of, <laughs> actually, not, not totally. This kind of happened to me. I went to visit um, my 
mom back home where I grew up in Michigan. And I was um, going a new way to get to Whole Foods, actually. And I had come across this new bookstore that had opened in Michigan. And it kind of took me aback because I was like, are bookstores even a thing? Like, all the Barnes and Nobles are closing. Like, what the heck? What's going on? And so I just walked in because I love books. And it ended up being this new independent used bookstore. And I was like, oh my goodness, you know, I'm going to have an amazing field day here because I love books and I love used books. I love the smell of them. I love the idea of like, oh, who read this book before me? Like, what kind of person were they? Again, I'm, I'm weird like that. But this is the thing, taking a new route to Whole Foods, I see a store that I hadn't seen before. I stopped in and I ended up stumbling on a really cool book that I'm really excited to read. And maybe I'll talk about it later or some other time on this podcast or on this YouTube channel. So this is what I'm saying. It's a lot easier for you to have more unique in inputs than you think. And it's not just the inputs, but it's the story that it creates, right? Again, this entire podcast episode in terms of how to create content happened simply by me having my CEO lunch at a particular restaurant and having a conversation with the waitress. And it ended up sparking not just unique insight for me, right, in terms of me connecting the fact that I connect different things by reading that book, but also it created a new story, right? It created a new experience that I can now retell in my content. So again, this is like the easiest way to create content. Why does no one do it? And if you can't tell by now, one of my favorite things to do, sometimes it gets me in trouble, but I love it, is going down a rabbit hole. So I think one of the easiest ways to come up with content is simply to allow yourself to go down a rabbit hole. For instance, I had mentioned that I was like reading books on like ancient monarchies, like what the heck, right? I will go down rabbit holes. I will see where, where one thing will take me to um, the other. In fact, I think I got started on this by researching um, female presidents, how many female presidents there were in the world. I was thinking about Kamala Harris, who, you know, is vice president president and she attended Howard University. So did I. And so I was like, oh, I wonder how many female leaders are there. And then I kind of um, started reading about female leaders in history. And then I started reading about um, the ancient queens of ancient Egypt and, you know, all these different uh, regions in the world and how they were able to often, uh, you know, wrestle power away from like, you know, siblings or their brothers who were also trying to ascend to the, uh, to the throne. And that was really interesting to me because I'm very interested in feminine leadership styles and the way that women exert power. I think it's different than how men exert power. And so I was like, oh, well, I'm so interested in this, but I feel like I don't really understand the context because I don't understand how like dynastic or royal families worked, right? So all these like ancient, you know, um, monarchies in Egypt, but I don't, I don't know how, how does it work? Like if you have a king and a queen and one of them dies, does it automatically go to the sun? Sometimes, you know, two sons would be like co-princes, but then they would fight each other. In what circumstances would a daughter rise? If she's the queen, if she marries somebody, does he automatically become the king? Like, these are all the thoughts, right? So I would allow myself to go down these rabbit trails. And again, I end up coming up with so much unique insight that I can then put into my podcast. In fact, I've even come up with unique insight that I've put into paid programs simply by going down rabbit trails that others have not gone down because again, it gives me really, really unique insight. So I know from a productivity standpoint, and I get it because I can be very strict with myself from a you know productivity standpoint, self-discipline, right? That was my first, uh, major life coaching product that really took off was my 21 day self-discipline challenge, right? So I can be very, very disciplined and very, very focused, but I also know that my creativity comes from allowing me to kind of, you know, meander and go down rabbit trails because I end up picking up really interesting things that I'm able to like bring back, uh, to the fold, right? Bring back to my business or bring back to my content that can really help me set myself apart. So, you know, you don't want to do it all the time and you definitely don't want to do it while you are really focused on getting something done, but allow yourself to go down a rabbit trail. Be curious, right? Don't just read something and let that be the end of it. Ask yourself, like, how is this possible? How did this come about? What does this connect to? And you'd be surprised what unique insight you can often gather doing that. Now, clearly, I love having different experiences. I love, you know, again, stories, right? I, I love telling stories, but I love experiencing stories. So I really kind of shape my life to make sure that I'm engaging on some level, either with new people or with new ideas or with new experiences. But it wouldn't be possible for me to turn it into content if I wasn't also good at capturing these stories and capturing these experiences. And I find that that is something also that a lot of people don't do, even though they call themselves content 
content creators, coaches, entrepreneurs, et cetera. It's not enough for you to put yourself in interesting you know, places, but you wanna make sure that you're writing them down because you might forget. And so for me, I capture in two ways. So the first way is I journal. I have journaled since I was very young, but I don't journal like in the Dear Diary type of way, you know, like, oh, you know, today I ate blah, 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 and I really wanted Timmy to be my boyfriend, but he liked, you know, Mary and took her to the prom. Like we think about this kind of like teenage like, oh, you know, teenage angst in the diary. That's not the way I journal. Sometimes I can go weeks without even picking up my journal, but I, I journal in spurts. I usually will journal a few times a month, but I like to use my journal almost as a tool to help me uncover what I think about something or to help me uncover those links that aren't obvious yet. So I will often like write to myself or write to my future self. Sometimes I think like one day I'll hand my daughter like all of these journals and she's gonna be like, wow, mom was insane. Mom was crazy, <laughs> right? But I, I, I write as if I'm writing to someone else, not me. And I'm like explaining the situation. I'm explaining these experiences. And I find that the act of writing, and I do both handwritten journals and digital journals, even though I tend to be more digital now because I am a content creator and I do work online and I'm on my computer all the time. And I find that it's just easier. So I think naturally I prefer the written process of like writing in journals, but it's just so impractical that I just really Really trained myself to enjoy journaling via um, digital apps. So I will journal and again, I'm writing as if I'm not writing to me, like I'm writing to somebody else. And I, I become amazed because it's almost like I'm standing outside of myself and I'm like watching what I'm writing but I don't really know what I'm gonna say next, right? It's just kind of like free association and I'm, I'm almost writing to see what comes up and stuff comes up, right? I end up making these connections that I wouldn't have made had I not gone through the process of journaling. And it's often those connections that I will then zero in on and I say, uh-huh, that needs to be a podcast. We're talking about that. So journaling is really, really effective for me. But another thing that I do because I'm a complete nerd and complete geek and I love books is I still take notes on my books, right? I know people could not wait to get out of high school because they're like, oh, not another book report. I hate taking notes on books. Listen, I love taking notes on books, right? Even that Kindle book. I mean, that's why I had it with me at my CEO lunch because I was thinking about content, but I was also wanting to write down the notes that um, I needed to take based on the book that I was reading. And so so what I will do is I will create notes for each book. Um, I do this inside of Notion. I feel like I shout, shout this guy out a lot. I've never met him before in my entire life. I think his content is really, really good. It, this is not sponsored. Like, just go check out this man's channel. Tell him I sent you. His name is August Bradley. And he has a lot of really great content, particularly for a kind of note-taking tool called Notion. So I love using Notion in my personal life. And then I use Asana and some other tools with my team and in my business life. But for things like this, like, you know, writing down... Um, um, notes and books or keeping track of all the books that I'm reading and what I'm finding interesting about them. I really love Notion and I readily admit that I use August Bradley's system for keeping track of my notes. So if you're like, oh, I want to, you know, do better about that. I want to start taking notes on the books that I am reading and you're kind of tech savvy and you like tools like Notion, go ahead and check out August Bradley's videos and um, whatever system he recommends for the books. I've modeled my system off of that and I find that it's really, really great. I love that I can always circle back and I love Notion particularly because they have this like linking thing where you can link pages together. So I'll have one page for one book and another page for another book. And the way it's organized, it's kind of hard for me to tell it, you know, without screen sharing. And I don't want to go in too deep in case like that's not your thing. But I like it because oftentimes when I am reading books, it will remind me of another book to read. In fact, that book, um, Excellence Wins by the co-founder of the Ritz Carlton, which like kicked off this entire podcast episode, it came to me because I had, I had seen the book previously and I knew what it was about, like um, obviously excellence and service. I knew what the Ritz Carlton was as a hotel, you know, very high end hotel. I was actually reading um, Thou Shall Prosper by uh, Rabbi Daniel Lappin. And he was talking about service and how important service was from a from a standpoint of business and building wealth and and it reminded me I was like oh yeah kind of like that book by the guy who started the Ritz Carlton and I had like loosely been meaning to read that and so I like paused the book and then downloaded the Ritz Carlton book and told myself I would read it after I read um, Thou Shall Prosper so it's like I like to mirror, I like Notion because it allows me to mirror my note taking the same way it works in my brain and that I'm always linking like multiple things together. And so I really like having my notes structured the same way. Now, if you're not tech savvy, you don't need like a fancy Notion or Evernote or any of those other tools. You can just do this with 
you know, pen and paper, right? So I would recommend the bullet journal system. When I was heavy into pen and paper, that is something that I would use all the time. It's a particular system. There's so many videos on the bullet journals here on YouTube. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, if not, in fact, I think there's a lot of podcasts on iTunes and Spotify about bullet journals too. So <laughs> wherever you're listening to this from, I'm sure there's resources on uh, bullet journals, but I like it because it's a journal system that allows you to kind of create a table of contents on the front of your journal. Again, this is a physical journal that you're writing down but you create this table of contents, but the way it works is you can often add content out of order, but that table of contents helps you keep track of where everything is. And so I think that's a great place to also take book notes and to make those links and connections because you can put page numbers on the pages and then your table of contents is gonna tell you where your book notes are. And if there's any references, you can just reference the page number within your journal that connects to another book that you read that also has some unique insights. So this is my super geeky inside the mind of Courtney Sanders video, but really to me, this is the simplest way to create content. I know for some of you, you're going to be like, oh, but that's a lot, right? Like always having new experiences, talking to people, writing stuff down, reading books. But again, these are things I enjoy and these are things that I do anyway. And so it's very easy when I'm like, huh, I want to create a podcast or I want to create a YouTube video. I don't have to, you know, do a lot of searching or keyword, like whatever. Like sometimes I will do that just to figure out maybe how I want to title something but in terms of the content, I don't really need to do a lot of research to come up with my content topics. And I personally think my content topics are interesting because I'm literally bringing content that is from my personal interest and I am connecting it, right? That was the whole point of uh, this podcast. The easiest way to create content is to connect two different things, find the unique insight in that and relate it to something that is useful for your audience. That's literally what I did with this podcast. So if you would love even more tools, not just on creating content, but creating charismatic content, right? Content that will allow you to magnetically attract your audience and really how to create an entire brand that is magnetic. I invite you to apply to my signature marketing program for online businesses and coaches, which is called the Next Big Name Bootcamp. I truly show you like what I personally did, how I went from nothing, no following, no money, no ad spend, nothing to create a brand, right? A profitable, successful seven figure coaching brand. And so if you're looking to do the same so that you can become the next big name in your industry, you can click the link below, whether it's here on this YouTube channel or in the show notes, if you are listening to this on iTunes and Spotify in order to apply. And if accepted, you'll be invited to an enrollment call with my enrollment team and they will let you know all the details. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this podcast uh, as much as I had fun making it because it was super easy for me to make. I like literally went to lunch and then came here, turned on the camera and told you about it. And I challenge you to go out and try to create some content the same way. So with that, I will see you in the next podcast episode or my next YouTube video or on either Instagram or TikTok. My username is Courtney L. Sanders on both. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.